Hi. Hey, everyone. What is up? I'm actually going to start us this way just because, and then we'll switch it. Hi, everyone. Good morning. It's Monday. Can you believe it, Beth? It's Monday. <laughs> I honestly can't believe it, Jen. I woke up this morning and went, oh, my God, it's Monday. I know. Just time is flying by. It's the, it's the beginning of March already, which is so fun because this week is my birthday week. But I will tell you the best thing about my birthday is that it's International Women's Day. So I'm going to be totally having fun with that. That's the coolest thing ever. So today we're going to be talking about overwhelm and loneliness, actually, or being alone or the, this this living in loneliness. And I'm excited because we're going to, I really think it's going to support you. Hi, everyone. Hi, Dion. Um, we're going to support you, I believe, today. I know we always do when, when we're with Beth because she's amazing. So I want to let you know who Beth is. So Beth Banning is one of my best friends. She is... A true example of how she, what she, what she preaches, what she teaches, and she lives in uh, trust. She really lives in that value of trust, trust, which is one of our core values of our whole um, organization, the Quickening Organization. And she just amplifies it and edifies it, and it's just amazing with that. And I'm so grateful for her, um, just showing up being with me, being with you, and being so willing, and she's such a service-oriented woman, um, giving of what she has and, and the tools and things that she has. And she's also uh, the master, she's a master coach because she has, we have licensed out her modality into our quickening coaching, and we're certifying coaches in our organization because of Beth, really because of Beth. So hi, Beth. Thank you. That was very Thank you. You're welcome. I that. Yes. Now you're now you're what? Now you're at I know. It's funny. But hi. I know. I don't know what's going on. Hi, Kimberly from sunny Miami Beach. What's going on with you over there? How fun is that? Oh, fun. You can oh, see yeah. some people on the side. I like I know. it. And I want you guys to share. If you're on and you're watching, please let us know. And we want you to share comments. We want you to. This isn't just us up here sharing. And, and obviously, there's some key things that Beth is going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about today. But we really want interaction from you. So just know that. So please do. Questions, comments, whatever. Yeah. Um, oh, look at and we're playing around with this in Be Live. There's this actually, uh, it's actually where you can have a show and you can invite people on. So we'll see. I don't know. Wow. We'll see. Always fun with you, Jen. I Always know. So, something new. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to play around with stuff. That's what I'm and you know what? Uh, life is too short to not play around and see what works fun and yummy and gets our values really kicking in. So I love it. So what are we talking about? <laughs> Let's talk about, well, I know one of the things we talked about was distinctions. And first, maybe you want to, because I was thinking about a lot of people don't even understand what distinctions really are. I know it's funny, isn't it? Well, why would we? Why would we, right? We don't have this conversation very often. So I thought it might be cool yeah, to. I love that. Mm-hmm. Especially since we're going to connect some distinctions to the challenges people have, which, you know, a lot of them, you, I love what you did. You, you really, um, what's the word, asked your, your group, like, what are the challenges you're having? So we're not making them up. These are the ones that came from the coaches that are working with people. And I love that. And so we're going to connect distinctions. And I'm going to tell you what that is in a moment to the challenges. And why I love distinctions and distinction-based learning is because they create choice. That's really what they're for. So a distinction, as the word says, I wish I had the definition of, you know, dictionary definition, but it distinguishes one thing from another, right? So with a distinction, you're seeing two possible choices. Now, most of us run around with one choice, those choices we've learned growing up, one choice for each situation we're in, right? So a distinction is giving you, distinguishing another choice for you. So then you have one that maybe you didn't even know you had. So that's really what a distinction is. It's a, an ability to create new choice. And that's why I love the distinction-based learning, because you're always creating new choices. Once you understand this idea of distinction, you can start distinguishing things for yourself, distinguishing new choices. It's not like 
the teacher is the only one that can distinguish these things for you, but you have to understand what that is before you can start distinguishing new choices for yourself. Does that make sense? It really does. And, and this is such a simple thing. But once you really start getting this, and this is what I love about the course, love it, love it, is we get to do it every single week and step into new, these new distinctions. And you really play around with, first of all, you realize, holy crap, I have not been, I didn't, I, I didn't even realize I didn't have the power of choice before. I didn't even realize that I wasn't choosing or I, or I wasn't giving, given more choices. And so that's what I just absolutely love that we get to do that. So yes, I'm excited to, to connect some of the dots, even with the overwhelm, like you said, that we've been pulling from, we really, really did pull from the coaches and who they're working with um, in their sphere. And these are, this was actually one of the top ones was overwhelm. I know it's very so, top one. I mean, it makes perfect sense, right? Because we are as busy as we are there, you know, we honestly, I believe we're not meant to do as many things as we end up doing. We're really not. I, it's like there has to be, I mean, in my physical form, as I feel my day, as I go through it, there needs, you know, we were talking about this, right? There needs to be that. It's not like rest, but it's expansion. It's like this, I mean, yes, rest, but as you just relax, you can expand into the bigger you. And we don't even have a chance to do that because we're always so contract, contracted and focused, which is awesome. But you want to be able to contract and focus and then release and expand and contract and focus and release and expand. And when we're always contracted and focused, we, it becomes overwhelming because we, it's like, imagine these things just piling up on you, right? And there's no space to relax and expand. And that's overwhelm. Isn't that crazy? That's overwhelming. It's all these things on us, right? So the thing, the biggest first step is to start separating the pieces out. And this isn't necessarily a distinction, but it's a choice. Well, I guess it is. You know, a differentiation is between two things and a distinction can be just something that you did, weren't aware of before, right? So until you become aware of that, you've got all these things clumped together, right, into one big ball of yuck, then you can't like do anything about it. And that's overwhelm. So my suggestion, and this is what I do in my coaching, I know if somebody comes to me and, and all the coaches out there, anybody that's coaching in any modality, if your client comes to you with overwhelm as one of their challenges, which you'll hear over and over and over again, start pulling the pieces apart. What are all the pieces that they're dealing with? And start looking at them one at a time. They are not overwhelmed one at a time. They're not overwhelming at all. They're like, oh, I can deal with that. Here's what I want to do about that. Okay, that one's done. So really with overwhelm, you need to, the very first thing is start pulling things apart. Hmm. I love that because then in that you actually will be able to see, like you said, those distinctions and stuff. So the first distinction is just to pull things apart so that you can um, start choosing. And I, I think uh, we have so much, like you said, going on in our lives that one of the things that we've been talking a lot about that we're going to be doing in the March quickening here in Carlsbad is, is to, really fall into or almost like into the well overwhelm. We've talked about rest in the overwhelm, rest in the discomfort, rest in these things. And, and there's ways to do that. And when we say that, it's like this, what you're talking about, breaking it apart and we can start looking at it. And even if you don't know how to break it apart, so say if you, if you don't do this and you don't break it apart, what, what is something, is there another thing that somebody can do that would work? Yeah, I actually, there's a whole course I do just on overwhelm. I mean, it's a tiny, small course, and I'll give you some of the pieces here. So one of them is when our mind, and it's all about breaking it apart. I mean, really, every single strategy is about breaking it apart. So when our mind has all these things on it all at one time, and there's nowhere for us to release it, we're 
we're tense and overwhelmed. So the very first strategy and a, a, a possible new choice for you is start writing a list of all the things you need to do, all the things you think you're overwhelmed about. Because when we can get it out of our heads and on paper, our mind can relax a little. Isn't it funny? I mean, it seems so simple. So simple. But it's a huge piece, I'm telling you. It's what? like I write and and... Don't write lists in 10 different places. This is the other thing. Then your mind goes, oh, I'm never going to find those lists. So it's you do need to be organized about the list so that your mind can relax, that we know it's captured somewhere and we can let it go for a moment. Otherwise, your mind is going, no, I have to hold on to this or I'll forget. Mm. Okay. You know, I want to bring this up and we don't have to talk in detail about this, but I just want to yeah. bring it up as a for instance with yeah. this. I know in this world of uh, recovery of pornography and sexual addiction, one of the things that I noticed is that that overwhelm that you're talking about can, can spark somebody to go and look at pornography and, you know, do that because, you know, once they're in that space, that's the first thing that a lot of people that were in that addiction would go to. And what I, what we found is that there is that list that you're talking about, when I worked with clients that were going through that, when they just wrote that list out and it seems so simple, yeah. there was this like release. I know. And so there are, there are ways to help simple ways to help us move through this and even help an addiction that you might have. I mean, this can be, can be that serious where something that's really harming your life and stopping things in your life. Um, you know, and this, these things that we're talking about right now can support that. Yeah. And when we feel, I, I, I totally am with you on that because when we feel overwhelmed, we look to feel better because as a culture and many cultures, we avoid discomfort like the plague and we want to be comfortable. And, you know, I don't care what the addiction is. All addictions are looking to be more comfortable, looking to feel better. Do you know? So it, now there are suicidal ways of you know, taking care of us feeling better, but it's all we know, you know, it's like that we, again, we don't have as many choices in this culture as I would like to see. And that really is what the course is about. It's about giving new choices so that you have more options so that you don't automatically go to the, the catch all kind of feel better addiction. I mean, you know, we have all kinds of addictions, television, food, you know, things that, we do every day just to give us a break. And I want to be clear, if we're choosing them consciously, awesome, but we're not. We're choosing them unconsciously just to feel a little better. And this is where the challenge comes in because it doesn't take care of what we're trying to take care of. So conscious choices are what is going to take care of everything in our lives. And that's really the basis of, of, of all this work is to get more and more conscious so we can choose more and more consciously. I love that. And so I was oh, echoing again. Go what, what? It isn't weird to saying it just starts echoing. So we have about 10 minutes and I wanted to talk about that next piece, which is that lonely, feeling lonely, but but one of the other things that we saw that a lot of people were sharing that, that people have issues with, with is getting, experiencing loneliness and being alone in different areas of our lives. And, and it's good to be alone. And there's that loneliness can actually really stop us from living full out, living the lives that we really want. So I wanted to actually go into that if you're okay with that for the next 10 minutes. And then I wanted to see if anybody wants to share um, maybe a situation or something around, whether it's loneliness or overwhelm, maybe we could do that for five minutes or just talk about this for five minutes. It'd be sure. great. So, yeah. so just, I guess we need to talk about this idea of loneliness, first of all, being alone, is that I, I there's two things. There's being physically alone. There's no one around us. And then there's being alone just in our beingness. We can be in a crowd of people and have a sense of loneliness, do you know? So th they're really two different things. But what I'm, what I'm thinking most people talk about when feeling alone is being in a crowd of people and 
and feeling alone. Do you know what I mean? Because that seems weird. Do you know, like, how can I feel alone when there are all these people around me? So there are a couple, there's some, this is so deep and there's so many things. But one of the distinctions I want to bring into this is that we talk about this idea of focus in the, in the course. And unless you, and we call it focus, a lot of people call the similar idea, we look at it a little differently, but a similar idea about these limiting beliefs that we hold as the truth. So if we hold beliefs like, I'm all alone, I can't take care of myself, uh, people are dangerous, um, no one cares, my needs don't matter, we're going to feel alone. If you look at every single one of those, those are about being alone, right? So we make these things up when we're tiny little children. You know, a lot of us have really big things happen in our childhood that could make us believe that, but it can be a simple thing. I mean, I had like con compared to a lot of the stories I've heard, I had an amazing blessed childhood, right? I mean, my parents were a little nuts, but they loved me. I knew they loved me. And, you know, we had a great childhood. And I made these things up by these, it can be these little things that happen. And as a two-year-old or a five-year-old, you can look back and you can go, oh my God, I get how I made that up, but I made it up. And we bring that into our adulthood without questioning it, without getting conscious of it, without having other choices around choosing differently. So this is one of the reasons why we end up feeling so alone is because we hold this, this is why we call it a focus, because we look at it like this, right? We focus on how we're alone. We really do. It's like, oh, look, they did that, I'm all alone. You know, I mean, that's all we can see. So in the course, we open you up and we get you conscious and we allow, give you options to start practicing and looking at so that you can shift and, and expand and see the new choices. Now, I just, before we shift, I, I wanna say there's one other piece that's huge. Again, there are many pieces, but one other piece that I wanna talk about right now is that in this culture, we're really, taught that being self-sufficient uh -huh. and yeah. doing it by ourselves is the best possible choice. Uh -huh. So why wouldn't we feel alone? We're taught not to ask for help. We're not taught how to ask for help. We're not taught how to make a request or to negotiate or to do anything that has anything to do with <laughs> being supported by the people around us. I mean, it gives me chills and it freaks me out that this is culture we're, we're brought up in. Why wouldn't we feel alone? Why wouldn't we? And, it, and even that, that what you just said is the go-to even. So it's like, okay, well, this isn't working, so I can take care of it. I can't tell you how many times I'm learning that in the last three years with this collaboration of the quickening movement. I mean, it has been insane. I think that is my number one, my personal lesson is how do I let go and let others support? And I will tell you, it is layer after layer, level after level, piece after piece of talk about breaking apart. And you just have to keep stepping into it every day. And I think that's why for us, I mean, our, one of our core, core values again is community. So we have trust, community, and authenticity. Community is because, and we're all about collaboration. That's our first thing is collaborate, 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 bring each other together. Because when you're in that space and you learn the tools, that's why we brought the course in. Because when you learn how to identify, like you're talking about, when we're alone and that we aren't really alone or we can choose to be alone and we're choosing it in an empowered fashion and it feels so dang good. Right. <laughs> Then you know how to collaborate, you know, because that's what we really want. I believe I don't even know one person truly at the core of them doesn't want to collaborate, doesn't want to engage with others and feel in that support. Yeah, I'm with you. That, oh, I love what Kimberly just said. She, that's why I did this vacation alone. She said she went on a vacation to Miami Beach for 
which this is so that's perfect. Kimberly, I think um, as an example, she went for her 40th birthday and she went alone to Miami Beach on this vacation to celebrate her 40th birthday. How wonderful and empowering is that to yeah, know that. And, this is, that? and it sounds like it was a conscious choice to go explore how how this is for you. You know, I don't know why she did it or what she did, but it's an opportunity to explore what's in there for me. You know, I want to go and I want to see what's going to happen. You know, that's awesome. One of the things we were talking about, I know after we went to this leadership from the heart, we went to a leadership from our training, which was fun. Thank you, Lane, um, for inviting us. And one of the things that both Beth and I were talking about is that to me, the most important thing is that in this whole organization that we have a gathering place that we're gathering Um, and to be able to explore what that even means in our lives and where are we lonely and not lonely? Um, How that shows up. Is there anything else that you wanted to share about the lonely or you want to maybe go and we have about three minutes to see if anybody wants to. Oh, I was just seeing if anybody wanted to um, bring in a situation because, you know, as we talk about these things, it's always more powerful when there's a particular situation. Um, but if there isn't, I'm she really had something she shared. She said challenges wanting to help or fix situations and friend or family life to help. Many times I misunderstand that they don't want it or realize they can benefit and be happier because they've told me they are unhappy or stressed in life. So kind of stepping in, she said, I need to encourage with choices they may consider. Mm. I need to put that. And then um, and then she said, I think it's assuming or putting expectations in wanting him to join in when I just need to accept and love my situation. And that when he is ready, I'm assuming you're thinking of somebody specific, but um, I like that idea of, of this wanting to help or fix. And that's again, a huge thing that we've done in the Isle of my body diets and stuff of we say, be aware of fixing, you know, yeah. what does that look like? Yeah. You know, it's, it's great because there's so many cool distinctions that could be in there, you know, and a couple of them is, and, and, I don't know if this is true for her, but have, you know, check in is that oftentimes now we are at our core contributors. That's who we are. We want to help. We want to support. And at the same time, sometimes when we go to fix things, it's so we don't feel uncomfortable with other people's discomfort. Mm -hmm. So always before I offer anything, I check in, I'm going, is this just about me not wanting to feel uncomfortable, right? Is this, and again, if you're doing things consciously, it's awesome, but you have to get conscious, right? So those are the things I do. When I see things out there that I know I can help, I know I can help, right? I've got skills, I've got tools, and I want to help, but I I never jump, well, I don't say never, because I, you know, sometimes it just happens, but my, my intention is to stop, before I contribute anything, check in to see if this is just about me. And if it's not, and I really want to contribute, I ask, would you like my support? Would you like my support? People forget to do this. And it's huge because then those people over there can choose and say yes or no. And you know, then it's all like, they're so much more receptive to your advice or support or whatever it is if you've asked them whether they want it or not. Again, simple, but it hardly ever happens if you watch what goes on in the world. Yeah, that's true. I love that. And, and I want to actually do, Heather's, we, let's take one or two minutes, if you don't mind, just quickly see if there's something here. Heather Woody said, mom of three children with disabilities, husband that is depressed and trying to do things to help me and them. And I know, Heather, just because there's that over, I mean, there's probably a lot of overwhelm, I'm, ass- I'm assuming, um, Heather, but is there anything in that that? I'm not know? sure if there's a question. Yeah, or I'm not sure. She said she had something that she wanted to share, but um, yeah, I don't know either. But I love what you just said about uh, the uh, the choice beca- and then checking in with if, if it's just where is that discomfort in you and maybe why you're having that discomfort and just asking that question. I know we can ask ourselves, why is this happening? And be really, you know, set in who we are and what we're doing. And we talked, you know, you talked about, talk about trusted source journaling and these people talk, say God journaling, but getting clear and present with where we're at right in that moment. I think a lot of times we do react a lot to things because of, you know, we're just, again, conditioned to that. 
Yeah, we are. To be able to just sit in a moment and take 30 seconds to just go, what is it right now, right here? And then move forward. I've noticed for me, that's been a huge thing. And it creates more patience. It does. It actually, the overwhelm, and what's funny is the overwhelm also dissipates a lot when I just have started doing that more. Yeah. No, I love it. I really do. And, you know, you have the quickening coming up. I, I want to make sure we talk about that because if, if anybody wants to come and start even just exploring these distinctions and a space where you can start getting more conscious and seeing what you're all about, the quickening is awesome for that. It's awesome. So when is it exactly? I know I should know. Uh, I know. It's March 23rd and 24th. And yeah. then we have for the coaches, we have an extended two days before. So it's Wednesday, Thursday. So 21, 22. If you, because we do have another quickening coaching course uh, round starting April 12th, if you end up signing up for that and putting your deposit down or whatever you're doing and sign that contract to that you're going to be doing that next course, you actually can come to the um, quickening leadership uh, coaching. I didn't uh, know that. That's awesome. Retreat. Wednesday, Thursday, which we're going to be going through some really collaborating together, doing a mastermind. We're going to be doing some things that move us forward as a community and, and collaboration, really getting to know one another at a deeper level and taking these things that you're talking about deeper. And then we're going to step into Friday, Saturday um, with those that hopefully many will come here at my home, actually, in Carlsbad. And um, we're going to and then we're going to be dispersing on Saturday and and really leading ourselves because that's what it's about is learning what leadership is in our lives. And, and we take this kind of thing and figure out how can we, what are, where are we really living? How are we living? Is this how I really want to live? Something's not right here. What is it? And we get to explore that through these activities and improvs and all this yummy stuff. It's the funnest <laughs> thing ever. I quickenings are like the number one funnest thing to me ever. My kids love it. My girls have changed because of them. I mean, it's just been amazing. I love watching you talk about them because it's so, you know, it's so <laughs> passionate. So exciting. Really and I'm actually wearing my yellow because the yeah, the color that we're going to, we are going to be, you know, in flowers and different things and foods, we're going to be engaging a lot of yellow. So I'm going to be yelling, wearing my yellow for four days. So yeah. yeah. Good on you, baby. And you know, Heather, um, we can, we can share a little bit about that. Uh, maybe uh, I can take it to Beth and we can share some stuff and then put it in the comments once, because we do need to finish this video. Um, and we'll identify maybe some stuff there, but if that's okay with you, Beth, but we can play around with that. So yeah, thank you so much, Beth, for doing this. Again, you guys, every Monday we're gonna be doing this, so we'll be on my page, you're welcome to share. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do some fun stuff if you share and comment, and we'll do some little prizes, that'd be fun. I always love that kind of crap. I hear you. Um, <laughs> and uh, hopefully we'll see if you go to quickening, you can go to quickeningmovement.com, you'll find all the stuff, some of the stuff that's going on, and we're gonna be adding stuff in there, and. Check out what you can do to really get this work deeper in your life. Support you the best way we possibly can. So, yeah. Love you guys. Thank Love you. Guys. you. Bye. See you next week. Oh, yeah. <laughs>